My name is Alex Isles and welcome to Limestone Corner, a place where the Romans gave up. Now, the Romans are a famous civilization and they are also famous for their determination. When they came against enemies or against difficulties, they would learn from them very quickly. They would either adopt their enemies' tactics, they would maybe bring a new type of troops in that could better face the situation, or they would learn from their mistakes so they would not happen again. But here at Limestone Corner, we have a location where the Romans were defeated, and not by the native Britons, not by the weather, but instead by the sheer geology of this location. Now here at Limestone Corner, it's quite an interesting place because it's not actually made of limestone. It's made of an igneous rock called windstone. And I'll do another video about that, about the windsill, which is a geological feature just further to the west from where we're standing now. Now, windstone was formed about 295 million years ago when magma forced its way out through the tectonic plates um, and then cooled to form the windstone, an igneous rock. And then over time, the tectonic plates moved around the world to bring it to northern Britain. And eventually it would become a part of the landscape of here in the northeast of England after the last ice age. When the Romans arrived, they planned the route of Hadrian's Wall, and this is the most northerly part of Hadrian's Wall as well. So they came along here, and they were digging the wall ditch. So there was the wall ditch in front of the wall, then Hadrian's Wall itself, and then behind the wall there was the vallum, the ditch behind it. And so they constructed the wall ditch here, and they started cutting through the windstone. And as they were cutting through the windstone, they dumped the windstone to the north, and you can see these massive boulders here, which have been scooped out of the ground, cut out of the ground, broken up, and then just chucked to the north, and just left and deposited there. And they almost look like modern day tank traps. Um, obviously, I know the Romans didn't have tanks, and neither did their enemies, but I'm just saying they are like tank traps, and they lie there just to the north of the wall ditch right here. And as they came along, they were digging through here, breaking up the stone and moving it out. But at some point, they must have received an order to stop. And when they stopped, they just put down their tools, moved on, and they left the wall ditch as it is right here. And you can see, just going out westwards from where we are, the wall ditch continues and goes out towards some of the famous forts, such as Broccolita and Housesteads, in that direction. But here we can see what they were doing. Because they ditched their tools and they didn't finish the job, they've left small um, hints as to how they broke up the rock in the first place. And right here, what they did is they took massive chisels, put them in the top, probably in a location where the stone was weaker, where there was maybe quartz, chiseled out a little bit, put these massive chisels in, and then smashed the rocks apart, and then they would dump them north of the ditch. But at some point, as I said before, the order must have come along to say stop. Maybe they were being too slow in their construction. Maybe they needed to focus more on the wall. Or maybe there was another reason <clears throat> why they had to stop here. They stopped what they were doing, they left it, and they moved on. But it's really quite a puzzling question for us today. You know, why did they do that? Because to the south of here, in the vallum, the ditch behind the wall, they dug for a straight mile right the way through the windstone and created the vallum. And you can still see that today. Yet here at the wall ditch, they didn't. They left it as it is. And as you look in front of me, you can see how it becomes shallower and shallower and shallower until eventually you just have a small dip in the boulder clay. And it's more likely that some of that dip is actually created by modern day walkers. And it just continues until the wall ditch reappears. And so it's quite an interesting one because the wall ditch continues in front of Hadrian's Wall mostly for around about 96 kilometers or about 60 miles at various locations along Hadrian's Wall. And the Romans had started digging it here, but for some reason at the most northerly part of Hadrian's Wall, they stopped, they left it, and right here today, you can still see all of these stones just left at Limestone Corner. And they leave us one of these questions, one of these little 
mysteries of Hadrian's Wall that I absolutely love. That when you look at the Romans, you think they were never beaten by anything, they never stopped. But in fact, they were very pragmatic and sometimes they would just go, we're not going to continue with something. And I just really want to know what the thing was right here at Hadrian's Wall at Limestone Corner that made them go, no, we're going to stop. We're going to put down our tools and we're not going to continue. So I really hope you've enjoyed this little story about Limestone Corner. That I've been able to tell you a little bit of the history, a little story about Northern Britain and what was going on here in the construction of Hadrian's Wall. And that you'll join us for another video soon. Until then, stay safe and well, and thank you very much for watching.